And one of the things I like to watch when it comes to the Met prospects uh, in particular, or any prospects for any team, is when players get promoted. Now, I'm going to talk about a player that, that has been mentioned here and there. I don't know if you heard about him. He's not on the top 30 prospect list. But that's the thing about baseball is that a player can come out of nowhere and become a star or just become a very good pitcher or a very good player. Usually the pitchers are the ones that um, elevate themselves to a big big situation. And, and one of these pitchers that I've seen, is his name is Tyler Stewart. Now before we get into Tyler, I need you to subscribe to the Prospect Hut. And I'm going to read you a couple things, uh, his sort of ascension. Since he was drafted, I'll read you also his his uh, scouting report. Here's from Mesmerized Online. Pitching prospect Tyler Stewart promoted to Double A. And let's see what they have to say. Right-handed pitchers Tyler Stewart and Dylan Teabreak have been promoted from the High A Brooklyn Cyclones to Double A Binghamton Rumble Ponies. Both pitchers were selected in the draft last year, with Stewart being a sixth-round pick and Teabreak Teabreak being an eighth-round pick. Stewart leads all of minor league baseball with a 1.55 ERA this season, 14 starts for Brooklyn. Very good. The six foot nine righty has made 14 starts this season, hasn't allowed more than two runs in any of them. He has 84 strikeouts and 23 walks, 75 and two thirds innings, and has given up only three homers in that span. Very, very impressive. That is extremely impressive. Stewart is mostly a fastball slider pitcher that works in a changeup. At times as well. According to the article, I watched multiple starts this year where he threw his slider around 50% of the time. The fastballs are mostly in the 92 95 mile per hour range with the two seamer getting good late break. Late movement and Stewart's ability to command the pitch in the sound have resulted in a soft 49.5% ground ball rate. According to Metsmerize, they had Stewart ranked number 24 in their top 35 Mets prospect list that I that they updated in May. They expect him to be a little higher than than that when I, when they release their updated rankings next week, which I will show you. T break 24 yesterday, 24 years old yesterday, had a sparkling 2.08 ERA and 26 innings for the Cyclones this year as a reliever. T break struck at a whopping 40 batters in that span. And allowed only 15 hits. That's very impressive. He hasn't allowed a home run in 30 pro innings. Wow. T break throws his fastball 93 to 96 and gets above average spin on the pitch as he takes on his slider and curveball too. T break went back to back Big East Pitcher of the Year awards in 21 22 as a starter for Creighton. And that's interesting. So we're going to continue on with the next spot. Now I'm going to read you an article that came out last month. This was June 17th from Mesmerize. Uh, headline, Met, Meet Tyler Stewart, the minor league ERA leader. Okay, let's see what they have to say about that. What he's done well. Stewart's seasons, season highs for runs allowed in an outing is two, and he has been in a model of consistency and reliability for skipper Chris Newell. His pitch count has gradually crept, crept up, and he's now working over 100 pitches in a couple of outings has shown signs of being a durable workhorse. What he could do better, that's important. The short answer is not much. Stu's on-field statistics are impressive, but organizations can always search for more to make their prospects more projectable to the show. Stewart could potentially utilize his height, said he's 6'9", more to adjust to a higher release height and thus make his sinker a steeper and more difficult pitch to hit. Likely increase in both ground ball, swing, and miss rates. It's tough to change the release point in general, and due to his success, it seems there is no imminent need to force a physical change. He can also balance out fastball usage with, with his slider, a bit as his slider sits in the low 80s, and likely won't be as much of a swing and miss offering at higher levels if hitters can sit on it easily. It is important to note that these suggestions are nitpicky and shouldn't be made until they are deemed necessary as he has plenty of time left to develop in the minor leagues before making it to Queens. Now this is a uh, scouting report from Amazing Avenue about Tyler Stewart. And he was selected in the 6th round of the 2022 MLB draft, 179th overall. If you follow the Mets, that was considered a very good draft for the Mets. Where they drafted at number 1, Kevin Parada, number 2, Jet Williams... And uh, in the third round, the second round, 
Well, he did well. But Stewart was selected sixth. I want to read you some things about him. Give you more context about him. This is some of the things. Uh, let's see. The six foot nine, two hundred fifty pound right hand that throws from a three quarters arm slot of an arsenal that includes a four seam fastball that sits ninety three to ninety eight miles per hour, a sinker that sits in the mid nineties, a mid eighties changeup, and a low eighties slider. Tall pitchers often have trouble keeping their mechanics in sync, and Stewart is no exception. His control suffers as a result, and his pitches are not as effective as they could potentially be. Now we've seen that his control has actually been pretty good this, this past year. The sinker is his bread and butter pitch, generating a high amount of ground balls, but is not a bat misser. Indeed, this is the biggest knock on Stewart. Nothing in his arsenal is a true bat misser at present. His slider flashes depth and may eventually become a strikeout pitch, but needs more consistency. His fringy changeup may one day as well, but that pitch is even further behind in its development. Stewart is better at working glove side than arm side. As a result, is more comfortable with his sinker and slider rather than his changeup. So... They, you, you can probably see from what I read earlier and what I read here from a year ago that there has been improvement with his pitches. Uh, he's not walking as many batters, which is very important. Uh, a little note, he did get Tommy John surgery uh, prior to him getting drafted by the Mets. Um, and so he got Tommy John surgery in 2020, so... I find some of these pictures and the, very fascinating to, to read up about them before they get here. And I'm very fascinated about how a pitcher can come out of nowhere and become a star. We saw that with Jacob deGrom. That's the best example. He was going to be a reliever, a middle reliever. Remember Rafael Montero was going to be the star pitcher? That didn't turn out to be, uh, that didn't turn out well for Montero, but it turned out great for Jake, especially when he was with the Mets. But, um, this can happen with pitchers. We actually saw that with Seth Lugo. If you, if you remember or you followed it along, I followed it. Seth Lugo was not a guy that was considered a big prospect. He was considered a guy 29th, 30th, in the top 30 on MLB.com. And I was very impressed with his breaking ball when he was starting with the Mets in 2016. He was a big reason, along with Rob Gazelman, why they were able to get the postseason that year uh, to give them stability with the pitching staff. And he was a very effective reliever with the Mets. I think the Mets missing this year uh, out of that bullpen. But that's the kind of stuff you can get um, from pitchers. So you let me know what you think about this video on the Prospect Hut. And I appreciate time to watch. And I'll see you later.